Hello and welcome to another EDH gameplay video brought to you by MTG Mudster. Errata do have affinity for generic goblin noises. Hey gang, just to let you know, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at flipsidegaming.com and originalmagicart.store. Using the code gets you 10% off orders $10 or more, and you get to help out the channel at the same time. I also want to let you guys know that Flipside Gaming is doing another giveaway, this time for a box of Ultimate Masters. Anyone who uses my promo code MTGMUDSTA for orders over $10 or more will be entered to win. There's one entry per person, so I wish you good luck, and please be sure to let me know what box topper you get when you win. Today's game finds us back at Family Fun Hobbies in Hamilton, New Jersey. Bree has joined us playing her Jaleva deck, keeping a mountain, an island, a swamp, Molten Slag Heap, Decree of Pain, Telling Time, and Spellbound Dragon. Sean, who's been into the Guilds of Ravnica kits, is playing Tristani, keeping Windswept Heath, Plains, Sun Petal Grove, Night of Autumn, Secluded Step, Circuitous Route, and Angel of Serenity. Bree's friend Zach is playing Joda, keeping a Breeding Pool, Tundra, Scrubland, Vorinclex, Exotic Orchard, Godless Shrine, and Darksteel Colossus. And lastly, Trevor is playing Xenagos, keeping Game Trail, Rampant Growth, See the Unridden, Green Warden of Marasa, Yavimaya Hollow, and a Mountain. Zach wins the die roll and starts us off. Zach plays a Tap Breeding Pool and passes. Bree plays a Molten Sly Keep, passing. Sean plays a tap secluded step and passes. Trevor plays a tap game trail and passes. Zach plays a tap godless shrine, passing. Bree plays an island and passes. Sean plays a windswept heath, cracking it and taking three to go and find Temple Garden. In the meantime, he casts Swiftfoot Boots and passes while he searches. Trevor plays a mountain and he casts Ramp and Growth to go and find a basic. Zach plays a scrubland and passes. Bree plays a sunken ruin, passing. Sean plays a Sun Petal Grove, and he casts a Mimic Fat. Trevor draws and plays a Mountain. He then casts Palacranos and passes. Zach plays an Exotic Orchard, and we see Joda hit the field. He then passes. Bree plays a Mountain, and she casts Jaleva. The table exiles their top four cards, but Bree doesn't hit very many targets. She does get to exile Stolen Identity though, which is pretty sweet, and she passed to Sean. Sean plays a Savannah and casts Circuitous Route, which I guess is basically a newer version of Explosive Vegetation since it also can find gates. He then passes to Trevor, searching for his lands. Trevor draws and plays a Yavimaya Hollow. He brings out Xenagos, and faster than you can say combat, he has the trigger go on Placronos, and he swings him at Zack for 10. Zack plays a Tundra and is able to pay one of each color of mana to cast Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. He hits both of Trevor's creatures with a cast trigger and passes to Bree. Bree plays a Swamp and moves to combat. She swings Jaleva at Trevor and gets to cast Stolen Identity, targeting the Ulamog. She then gets to cipher the spell onto Jaleva, and upon connecting with Trevor for one point of counter damage, she gets to cast again. This time she makes a copy of Joda, and now is a token copy of each of Zack's creatures. Trevor kindly lends Bree his copy of Ulamog from another deck, and Sean provides a copy token. Sean draws for turn and plays a Plains. He then taps out to cast Angel Serenity, which resolves, and Sean hits the two Ulamogs and Zax Joda. With nothing else, he passes. Trevor draws and is a bit land starved. He casts a Defense of the Heart and passes Zack. Zack plays a Plains as a land for turn, and he casts Silvala, Heart of the Wilds. At the end of his turn, Bree casts Telling Time. She then casts Quicken to Cantrip and starts her turn. Bree taps out to cast a Dark Petition, having met the requirements for Spell Mastery. She tutors for a card with three black mana floating to her mana pool. She's looking for a chromatic lantern, which she quickly realizes isn't in her library. She has to compromise and takes a card. She then uses one of her black mana to activate the Molden Slag Heap, removing three counters for three red mana. She then pays all of her remaining mana to cast Jaya Ballard. Bree activates Jaya Ballard's second ability, discarding a land and drawing one. She then moves to combat and swings Joda at Trevor and Jaleva at Zack. Upon connecting with Jaleva, Bree then casts Stolen Identity again, and makes a copy of the Mimic Fat. Sean draws and plays a Forest. He casts Tristani, and then drops Knight of Autumn. As it enters, he chooses to have it destroy an artifact, and Bree's Mimic Fat falls victim to it. Sean also gains one life from the Tristani trigger. He then equips the boots onto Tristani. Moving to the end of turn, Zack casts Path to Exile to hit Sean's Angel, fearing what Trevor might get in his upkeep when he sacrifices his Defense of the Heart. 
Trevor draws and casts Conclave Naturalist in his main phase. He has the Enter the Battlefield trigger, target, and destroy Sean's Mimic Vat. With nothing else, Trevor passes. Zack plays a mountain and taps out, activating Selvala to help cast Vorinclex. It's the biggest creature, so he gets to draw from Selvala, and he passes to Bree. Bree draws and moves to combat, swinging everything at Zack for 5. She gets her stolen identity, Cypher Trigger, and makes a token copy of Vorinclex, which is just super duper for Sean and Trevor. Trevor also helps out once more, providing Bree with a copy from another deck. Bree then upticks Jaya to make some mana, and taps an island to cast Snapcaster Mage. She gives Dark Petition flashback, and taps a swamp for 2 black. She then casts Dark Petition once more, gaining 3 black mana in her mana pool, and goes to tutor for a card. Bree taps some more lands, and takes out Zack's Vorinclex with a Terminate. She then taps out completely, and casts Worst Fears, targeting Trevor. Sean draws and plays an Evolving Wilds. He then casts a Michiko Kanda, gaining 2 life as she enters. He cracks the Wilds, and passes to Trevor at the end of turn. Bree uses the Defense of the Heart trigger on Trevor's upkeep, and goes to Trevor's library to find 2 creatures. Because he's a gentleman, Trevor doesn't run any 2 card combos in this deck, and Bree settles for a Blightsteel Colossus and Oracle of Moldiah, drawing from Selvala as the Blightsteel is now the largest creature on the field. Bree then draws for turn, and Trevor reveals a mountain off the top, which Bree plays. Bree then casts See the Unwritten from Trevor's hand, and gets to keep 2 creatures as she's met the Ferocious trigger requirements. Sadly, Bree only has 2 choices, and takes the Soul of the Harvest and Stalking Vengeance. She draws from the Soul trigger as the creatures enter, and reveals a Tectonic Edge off the top, playing it. Bree then moves to combat, and swings a Stalking Vengeance at Zack for 5, and passes to Zack. Zack draws for turn, and he casts a Constance Kratos Sphinx in his main phase, and passes. Bree doesn't really get to untap because of the old Vorinclex triggers, and she upticks Jaya, discarding 3 cards and drawing 3. She then moves to combat, hitting Sean for 1 with Jaleva, and casts Stolen Identity again to make her own copy of Blightsteel Colossus. She also has to sacrifice a permanent due to Michiko Kanda's trigger, and Snapcaster Mage takes one for the team. Sean draws for turn, and pays 3 to cast a Farhaven Elf. He goes and grabs a basic forest, and passes. Trevor draws the Myriad Landscape off the top for his card for turn, and he plays a forest in his main phase. Sadly, much like Bree, this doesn't help him as the majority of his lands have to stay tapped until his next turn. He then plays a Myriad Landscape as a second land for turn, and it comes untapped. Moving to combat, Trevor swings the Blightsteel at Bree, and the Soul at Zack. Bree is concerned that she's going to be focused down hard, so in an effort of goodwill, she blocks the Blightsteel with Warrenclex and takes 5 Infect, while Zack takes the 6 from the Soul. With nothing else, Trevor passes. Zack plays a tapped Overgrown Tomb, his life total teetering very low compared to the others. He moves to combat, and the Sphinx finds its way at Bree. Bree blocks it with Joda, as she knows she doesn't have the Chromatic Lantern in her deck, so it's not as useful, and Zack passes turn. Bree draws for turn and uses Jaya's ultimate, which basically gives all of her instants and sorceries flashback. She then plays an island and moves to combat. She swings her Blightsteel at Zack and Jaleva at Trevor. Zack blocks with Selvala, taking 8 poison, and Trevor takes another 1. This lets Bree cast Stolen Identity, and she makes a second Blightsteel before passing to Sean. Sean gets to untapped, but still has some tapped lands from last turn. His main phase has him casting Well of Lost Dreams, and then follows up with the Lifecrafter's Bestiary, setting up his future draw engines. Trevor draws and reveals Survival of the Fittest off the top. He then plays a Forest, and he recasts Xenagos. Moving to combat, Trevor puts the Xenagos trigger targeting the Blightsteel. Bree responds by casting Cryptic Command, tapping all of her opponent's creatures and drawing a card. Trevor then passes. Zack draws and gets to untap his lands. He plays a Temple Garden, taking two to have it come in and tapped, and he recasts the Ulamog that's been in his hand since it was bounced back with the Angel. He uses the on cast trigger to hit both of Bree's Blightsteel Colossuses, and tries to curry favor with the rest of the table. At the end of turn, thanks to the Jaya Emblem, Bree is able to flashback Terminate and kill Zack's Sphinx. Bree plays an Island and moves to combat. She hits Zack with Jaleva for one, and once more makes a copy of the Blightsteel. She then passed to Sean. Sean scries with the bestiary, and bottoms it, drawing a card for turn. He plays a plains, and he passes. At the end of turn, Trevor cracks his myriad landscape to go and find two forests. Trevor draws and reveals Combustible Gear Hulk off the top. He then pays the 9 to cast Tooth and Nail Entwined, but Bree is ready with the Cryptic Command from her graveyard. She counters it, and taps all creatures. Trevor then casts Survival of Fittest, while Sean takes a phone call for the store. Zack draws and casts Time Stretch. With the spell in the stack, Bree responds by flashing back Telling Time, looking for a counter. She finds nothing, and Zack gets two extra turns. 
With the spell resolving, Zack passes to his first extra turn. Zack casts Demonic Tutor in his main phase, and he goes to find a card. He finds and casts Swords to Plowshares, giving Bree 11 life, but exiling the Blightsteel Colossus token. Zack then recasts Jota, and moving to combat, he swings Ulamog at Bree for 10. This also has Bree exiling the top 20 cards for a library, and Zack then moves to his next turn. Moving to his third turn, Zack lays out his lands for two of Jota's casts. The first is for Progenitus, and the second is for playing his Darkseal Colossus. Zack then moves to combat, swinging Ulamog at Bree once more, and the Eldrazi exiles 20 of Bree's cards from her library and deals 10 damage. Zack then cracks his Bloodstained Mire, taking one and going to find a tap Steam Vents. Bree draws her turn and swings to Levit Sean for one. She gets to cast her Ciphered Stolen Identity once more, and this time has the copy make a token copy of Oracle of Moldiah. Bree then flips and places Swamp off the top of her library and reveals a worn Power Stone. She then passes. Sean scries with the Bestiary trigger and bottoms the card. He draws and then passes to Trevor. Trevor casts a Gruel Rage Beast in his first main phase and has it fight Zack's Darks to Colossus. He changes his plan midway through though and doesn't want it to die, paying to regenerate it with Yavmai Hollow. He then moves to combat, putting the Xenagos trigger onto the Oracle of Moldiah, and he swings all of his creatures but the Blightsteel at Zack, and the Blightsteel itself at Bree. Zack blocks what he can, and Bree decides to flashback Quicken, drawing a card, and letting her cast a sorcery at instant speed. That sorcery just so happens to be Sever the Bloodline, which I think is criminally underplayed, and she targets the Blightsteel. Zack then takes four from the unblocked Conclave, and Trevor uses the Stalking Vengeance triggers to finish off Zack with the Soul of the Harvestine, and deals the rest to Bree. Bree plays a Temple of Epiphany off the top of her library, scrying one and bottoming it. She then plays a Mountain, and reveals a Mountain off the top. Her library is now much smaller than her Exile, which amuses me greatly. She then casts Rexiel the Risen Deep, and follows up with a Worn Power Stone. Moving to combat, Jaleva finds her way at Trevor once more, dealing one and landing her copy Stolen Identity. She has it make a token copy of the Gruel Rage Beast, and has her token fight the original, essentially trading the two. Sean scries and bottoms the card. He draws and then passes, and at the end of turn, Trevor activates survival, discarding Mina and Den to go and find Tyrant's familiar. Trevor draws for turn and casts a Spellbreaker Behemoth and then a Savage Ventmaw in rapid succession. He moves to combat, putting the Xenagos trigger on the Ventmaw, and swings it at Bree for 8. Trevor also gains 6 mana from this swing, and his second main phase, he uses it to help cast Dragonlord Atarka. He then uses the Atarka's trigger to take out Jaleva and Oracle, and passes to Bree. Bree casts and uses it to destroy Dragonlord Atarka, dealing 16 damage to Trevor. Bree then casts Beacon of Destruction, targeting Trevor, and deals 5, hoping that puts Trevor close enough for Sean to deal with. Sean scries and bottoms a card. He casts Restoration Angel, paying 1 green as he casts it to draw. It then enters, and he gains 4 life, and he uses the Well Trigger to pay 3 mana and draws 3 cards. He then blinks the Knight of Autumn, and has it come in and blow up Trevor's survival of the fittest, gaining another one life from Tristani. Sean then plays a Forest's land for turn and passes. Trevor casts Scourge of the Throne in his main phase and he moves to combat. He puts the Xenagos trigger on the Scourge, swinging it at Sean and the rest of his creatures at Bree. Bree blocks the Spellbreaker but still dies to the rest of the damage, and Sean flashes in Self Esquire to prevent all damage that will be dealt to him this turn. Sean gains one life and lets the damage through, but there's a mistake thinking he only took six as opposed to eleven. Trevor also regenerates the creature that Bree blocks so it doesn't die. Trevor then casts a Tyrant's Familiar with the mana he got from the Ventmaw swinging and moves to his second combat step. He swings a Tyrant and Ventmaw at Sean, using the Tyrant's trigger to deal 7 to the Selfless Squire and kill it, and Sean takes 0 as it's still all prevented. Trevor then casts a Green Warden of Morass in his second main phase from the Ventmaw mana, and he returns Tooth and Nail to his hand. Sean scries and bottoms the card. He plays a Bountiful Promenade as the land for turn, and he casts Recruiter of the Guard in his main phase. He gains one life as it enters, and he tutors four champion of the Lambholt and puts it to hand. We see the champion hit the field, and Sean then casts Chalet, Voice of Plenty, which gives him four more life, and he puts a counter onto the champion. With nothing else, Sean passes. Trevor plays a Firelit Thicket as his land for turn, and he resolves a Tooth and Nail Entwined. He grabs Rurik Thar and Inferno Titan from his library, putting them to hand and then he puts out Rurik Thar and Combustible Gearhulk. Sean has Trevor draw three cards, and Trevor moves to combat, putting the Xenagos trigger onto the Gearhulk. Trevor swings Xenagos, the Scourge, the Ventmaw, the Tyrant's Familiar, and the Gearhulk at Sean. As Sean has the most life, it triggers the Scourge again, untapping all of Trevor's attacking creatures, and putting another counter onto the dragon. 
and Trevor also has the Tyrant's Trigger deal 7 to Shalai. Sean declares no blockers and takes the full hit for 37. Trevor still has to sacrifice 5 permanents because of the Michiko trigger, and Trevor sacrifices 5 lands. He then moves to his second combat step, putting the Xenagos trigger onto the Tyrant's Familiar this time, and he swings the Flyers again. His Tyrant triggers, targeting Michiko this time, and Sean blocks the Tyrant's Familiar with his Restoration Angel, and chumps Xenagos with the Farhaven Elf. Sean then drops to 3 from the creatures he didn't block. And in his second main phase, Trevor uses some of the floating mana from the Savage Vent Maw to pay for Inferno Titan and deal the final 3 damage to Sean. Game review time. So I think this highlights two important lessons. One is to never give up no matter how far you are behind, which was exemplified by Trevor having been so far behind early on, especially when he was targeted by worse fears and things like that, and then was still able to pull out a win. The second lesson being don't pull out ahead unless you have a way to protect yourself. This was shown by Zack and Bree, this was done early on by Zack, when he cast Ulamog for only 5, exiling Trevor's creatures and making an enemy of him for the rest of the game. Sean was also concerned, and so was Bree, and all three of them pretty much ganged up on Zack. Bree then got her turn of being public enemy number 1, when she had a billion Blightsteel Colossuses out, and basically everyone was trying to find ways to deal with it. I will say that on Trevor's turn where he cast the Gruel Rage Beast, instead of having it fight the Darksteel Colossus, I probably would have had it fight Jaleva. Bree's Jaleva with the Stolen Identity pretty much went unanswered for the entirety of the game until she died. I would also caution people playing Tristani to not just take the hits knowing that you can gain a bunch of life back later on. It can lure you into a false sense of defense and basically allow you to let things go through that you really shouldn't. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.